I'm Dutch and I like my G's to like growl. My name is Kaylee and in this video I'm going to talk about the latest research into the reason why Gigantopithecus blackii, the largest ape to have ever lived, went extinct. So this video is sponsored by Aura, but as always more on the sponsor later in the video. So I've created a video on Gigantopithecus blackii, the largest ape ever, back in July of 2022. It's a fascinating species of great apes that lived simultaneously with a number of hominids, including some of our ancestors. So I'll give you a quick rundown on the species of Gigantopithecus blackii, or Gigantopithecus blackii, whatever you prefer, I just like to say Gigantopithecus blackii. So yeah. Quick rundown on the species. German-Dutch paleontologist Gustav Heinrich Ralf von Koningswald came across some strange large teeth at drugstores in China that were being sold as dragon teeth. Of course, of course they were. But he noticed that the teeth had some similarities with human teeth. So his initial thought was that there had been a giant human ancestor. But upon closer inspection, after he came across these large teeth still inside the mandibles, he concluded that these teeth belonged to an extinct species of giant apes. This video is sponsored by Aura, so I've got a game changer for you to talk about. Have you ever googled yourself and were shocked to see your personal information exposed on one of those public listing sites? I mean, I totally get it. In fact, I did it recently and boy, that was an eye-opener. I found my email, my birthday, things like that just out there for the world to see. So I thought enough is enough and that's why I'm thrilled to introduce you to Aura, our privacy superhero. So Aura, your digital guardian angel, tackles data brokers selling your info to robocallers and spammers. It identifies and sends opt-out requests, legally forcing them to remove your information. And trust me, they don't make it easy. That's where Aura comes to the rescue. Aura is your all-in-one digital fortress, shield against hidden online threats, easy setup, no app juggling, one affordable package covers it all. A no-brainer for complete protection. So are you ready to take control? Head to aura.com slash history with Kaylee for a free two-week trial. This is a game changer. Don't miss out and your privacy will thank you. So in the evolutionary family tree, this species was placed with the subfamily of the Ponginae under the new created genus of Gigantopithecus and the species name became Blackie. Therefore, the species is now known as Gigantopithecus Blackie, or like I said, Gigantopithecus Blackie if you prefer to say it like that. Just like we are Homo sapiens. Homo is our genus and sapiens is our species. So the fossilized remains of Gigantopithecus Blackie are all found in southern China and it is therefore believed that they may have been restricted to that area. There have been similar looking fossils that have been found in northern Vietnam and Thailand, but these do seem to not only differ, but are quite a bit younger as well, so it's unclear if they can be considered to be of the species of Gigantopithecus blackii, or if they are a similar species to it, but different entirely. We don't know. So Gigantopithecus blackii lived in the area of southern China, to be exact, like more between 1.7 and 1.8 million years. It's in insane. They most likely thrived and domineered the environment for quite a long time. The species seemed to not have any natural predators, as they were simply too large, so, you know. How large were they? They averaged a height of approximately 3 meters, which equates to roughly 9 feet and 8 inches. Yeah, that's, that's, um, massive. 
They seem to have weighed between 200 and 300 kilograms, which equates roughly to between 441 and 661 pounds. So yeah, they uh, were indeed a gigantic species, and the name Gigantopithecus is very fitting for them. Their massive bodies would have required a lot more food to sustain themselves, as, you know, a bigger body requires more fuel to keep that engine going, so to speak. But yeah, there is a very big downside to being this large, unfortunately, as a bigger body seems to get less offspring. And less offspring is a risk for a species trying to make it and not go extinct as you need a large enough population to keep growing. And it seems that this was not the case when it comes to Gigantopithecus blackie. The smaller population size also makes it harder for a species to adapt to environmental changes, changes in food sources and more. So the oldest fossilized remains of Gigantopithecus blackie found in southern China date back to 2 million years ago. And somewhere between 215,000 and 295,000 years ago, the species slowly went extinct. They did not vanish quickly, but they seem to have been unable to adapt fast enough to environmental changes like the other species of apes and hominids around them. So I did cover this in the original video back in July of 2022, that you know, I made on this species, but back then, this new study hadn't come out yet. So around 300,000 years ago, just before the extinction window of Gigantopithecus blackie, which was between 295,000 and 215,000 years ago, the climate started to become quite unstable. Habitats with local flora and fauna seemed to change, and this was the case in southern China as well. So the landscape used to be quite tropical with lush forests and within these forest habitats there was an abundance of food for Gigantopithecus blackie. But approximately 300,000 years ago this tropical forest landscape started to turn into a drier savanna landscape that was becoming more seasonal, a much drier climate. And this revealed a fatal handicap of Gigantopithecus blackie as their size required a certain amount of food which was no longer available to them. Gigantopithecus blackie seemed to have been a fruit eater and they were unable to adapt to new food sources available to them in this savanna landscape. The less nutritious grass, roots, bark and leaves had become their dominant food source and this led to chronic stress in the population as they were unable to sustain themselves. The chronic stress may have also led to even fewer offspring as stress plays, you know, quite a big factor in the reproduction of species, making it a lot harder and in some cases even impossible, unfortunately. Stress isn't good. Their large bodies made them unable to climb the trees to explore new food sources in search for other types of fruits they were able to eat and nourish themselves with. The smaller apes living with them in the same area around the same time were able to climb the trees and adapt to these new food sources. So over the course of nearly a decade, a team of Chinese and Australian scientists took sediment samples from 22 caves over a wide area in the Zhuangzi region in southern China. Half of these caves contained Gigantopithecus fossils, while the other half did not. The scientists used luminescence dating to reveal when the sediments were last exposed to sunlight and when they were therefore deposited into the cave. And they did uranium-thorium dating to pinpoint when uranium was taken up into the bone specimens after the animals had died. The older sediments dated back to around 2 million years ago and they had hundreds of teeth from Gigantopithecus within them. But the younger sediments from the extinction window between 295,000 and 215,000 years ago only contained some three to four teeth. So it does seem like their size was their downfall. 
as smaller relatives of them like the Chinese orangutan, otherwise known as, you know, uh, Pongo by den Reigi, a name you probably have never heard of, <laughs> were able to survive this climatic change and were able to adapt to the new food sources available to them due to their slow metabolism and the ability to survive on limited foods. And they were able to climb the trees in search for those food sources. So the combination of the smaller population size of Gigantopithecus blackii and their inability to adapt to new food sources to sustain themselves, the species of Gigantopithecus blackii seem to suffer a demographic death. Not enough individuals to continue the line and not enough food to survive. So there is some speculation in the scientific community that the giant sloth suffered the same fate as it seems every animal has a limit to how big they can become before they get too big to survive. So hopefully we learn more about the demise of the giant sloth someday. Uh, and hopefully, of course, more information will be uncovered about Gigantopithecus blackii. I want to learn more, so hopefully more will be revealed to us in the future. There is, however, one strange mystery surrounding Gigantopithecus blackii, and that is the fact that no fossils from the neck down have ever been found or documented. Meaning, <laughs> we have only found jaw fragments and teeth, which isn't a lot to go on. Given the fact that Gigantopithecus blackii roamed southern China for nearly two million years, that is quite surprising to the researchers. It's also thought that Gigantopithecus blackii never lived in caves, mostly because that isn't the environment in which they were able to find food. So it's thought that the remains that we have found so far in these caves were brought in by rodents and other animals. The teeth and mandibles found in the caves of great apes went through an extreme complex process of death, decomposition, weathering, transport and deposition before they became embedded in these cave sediments. This is based on the fossil evidence found so far. This is also probably the reason why only the hardest part of the bodies of Gigantopithecus blackii became fossilized during geological history. Homo erectus, an early human ancestor, is known to have lived in northern China and further south in Indonesia at the same time as Gigantopithecus was living in the forests in what is now southern China. Archaeologists have uncovered a large number of stone tools dating back to 800,000 years ago in the Bozi Basin near a cave where Gigantopithecus blackie fossils were found. Unfortunately, so far we have no direct fossil evidence that Homo erectus and Gigantopithecus blackii coexisted in the region. But it is for sure a big possibility that our ancient human ancestors may have encountered the massive great apes more than once. I would not want to be them. You know, walking down in the forest and then suddenly seeing a three meter tall great ape. That would have been really scary. Yeah. Hopefully in the future, the researchers are able to uncover more about this mysteriously enormous species. And I'm very excited to learn more about them. Go to my sponsored link, aura.com slash history with Kaylee in the description down below to get a 14 day free trial and see if your personal information has been compromised. So what do you think of the latest revelations surrounding Gigantopithecus blackii? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of these kind of videos. And click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner or click one of the links in the description down below or click a video in the end card. And I would like to say a massive thank you to all my patrons and my channel members. Channel member comments are the ones that I will respond to for the foreseeable future. So. Feel free for my channel members to leave a comment and I'll make sure to, you know, respond to you. Uh, I've put my settings in a way that I can only see your comments, which is good. And uh, yeah, with that said, I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.